Nick De Vries has become the first ever Formula E world champion after leading the driver standings at the end of the Berlin E Prix. But how did the Mercedes-Benz EQ driver get into Formula E? Let's investigate. Hello everyone, my name is Richard Smith and welcome back to the Apex Motorsport where today we are taking a look at the Dutch sensation Nick De Vries and how he climbed up the motorsport ranks to eventually become a world champion. But in order for us to do so, we need to go back to 2004 when Greece shocked everyone to win the European Championships, Bandy at 20s, do they know Christmas, claimed the Christmas number one, and David Healy was yet to score one of Northern Ireland's most iconic goals against England. The flag stays down. Healy! Oh! What a moment for Northern Ireland! What a moment for Windsor Park! And if that doesn't make you feel old, YouTube wasn't even created yet. But it was 2004 that saw Nick de Vries first take part in a Carton Championship, the mini category of the Open Belgian Championship, which saw him finish down 10th place before a 20th place finish in the French equivalent the following year. 2006 was the year that Nick de Vries started to become quite competitive in Carton, and while Fernando Alonso was claiming the second Formula 1 world title and Leona Lewis was claiming the Christmas number 1, Nick de Vries was finishing as runner up in the cadet category of the Belgian Championship. 2006 also saw Nick de Vries claim 3rd place in the junior category of the Dutch Championship. Some people call 2nd place, others call it runner up, some even call it vice champion, but in 2007 Nick de Vries could call 2nd place whatever he wanted, after claiming 5 runner up positions across the year in various Dutch and Belgian character series, which helped him progress his development even further. The 2008 Bridgestone Cup Europe was where he started going head to head with some of his future rivals, with Daniel Kvyat coming off best, claiming the championship, which also saw the lengths of Jack Dennis and Luca Giallo take part. The 2008 12E Monaco Kart Club was also part of the Freezes calendar that year, and while he could only manage a 10th place finish, he did beat the likes of current Ferrari Formula 1 driver Carlos Sainz Jr. and former Williams driver Sergei Strachan. 2008 was also the year that Nick de Vries claimed his first championship victory with the Dutch driver winning the WSK International Series, with him also taking victory at the 2008 German Junior Car Championship, along with him competing in a few other series that season. In a busy 2009, he retained his German Junior Car Championship and also took victory in the CIK FIA European Championship, which also saw de Vries beat both Sainz and Kvyat to the title. Kvyat did get the better of the Freeze in the Andrea Magutti Trophy, but that didn't stop the Freeze from retaining his WSK International Series crown ahead of the Russian driver in signs. Alex Albon was also competing in this series alongside Esteban Alcon. The Freeze had different competition to contend with in 2010, with Jordan Chamberlain being his biggest rival for the CIK FIA World Karting Championship. It was the Freeze, however, who came out on top and he was able to retain his crown once more in 2011, beating Alex Albon to the title. 2012 was the year that Freeze would make the step up to single seater racing, and he started this part of his career off strong with a 10th place finish in the Formula Renault 2.0 NEC, which was won by Jake Dennis before a 5th place finish in a very competitive Formula Renault 2.0 Euro Cup. This championship was full of drivers who would eventually race in Formula 1 and Formula E, with Stoffel van Dorn, Daniel Kvyat, Oliver Rowland and Norman Nato all finished ahead of the Freeze, and there were some impressive drivers further down the standings as well, with Pierre Gasly, Jake Dennis, Jordan King, Esteban Alcon, Nick Cassidy and Alex Albon all taking part. 2013 would see the Freeze finish in 5th place once again in the Formula Renault 2.0 Euro Cup, this time won by Pierre Gasly. He would also claim 8th place in the Alps edition of the series before taking victory in both the Euro Cup and Alps series in 2014. 2015 would see Nick de Vries make the step up to Formula Renault 3.5 and he would end the championship in 3rd place before getting a seat in the GP3 series for 2016. He entered the championship with ART Grand Prix and would finish in a solid 6th place with Charles Leclerc winning the title ahead of Alex Albon. His performances impressed teams in the newly rebranded FIA Formula 2 Championship and he would impress once more with a 7th place finish in his debut season. 2018 would see him make even more progress with a 4th place finish, the highest finishing driver not to make a step up to Formula 1 for the following season, with Alex Albon moving to Toro Rosso, 
Lando Norris moving McLaren and George Russell getting a seat at Williams. He also started his endurance racing career with racing team Netherland and a 25th place finish in the LMP World Endurance Championship was satisfactory with him finishing 9th overall in class. 2019 would be a real breakthrough year for the Freeze, helped by the departure of the top 3 in the F2 Championship from the season before. He was one of the favourites going into the campaign and cruised his way to the championship title ahead of Nicholas Latifi, who got a seat in Formula 1 for the following season with Williams. De Vries was part of the McLaren Young Driver program from 2010 until 2019 and during this time he was also part of the Audi Sport Racing Academy. However, despite his success in Formula 2, he did not get a seat in Formula 1 and therefore had to look elsewhere and this is when Formula E became a viable option. Mercedes-Benz EQ had just officially entered the sport as a works team after years racing as HWA Race Lab and they snapped up the F2 champion to be a part of their driver lineup alongside former McLaren F1 driver Stoffel van Dorn. He finished 11th in the standings on his debut season in Formula E and helped the team finish 3rd overall in the team's championship. He took part in the Formula 1 Young Drivers test at the end of the 2020 season, which also saw Young Drivers Fernando Alonso, Sebastian Boemi and Robert Kubica take part. The 2020-21 FAA Formula E World Championship was when Nick de Vries proved the doubters rod to become the first ever Formula E World Champion after narrowly topping the standings with more than half the grid and title contention going into the final weekend in Berlin. De Vries started the season off with victory at the Dira E Prix with him ending the group qualifying as the fastest driver and then going on to claim Super Bowl. He finished 9th in the second race of the weekend and despite two retirements in Rome, he took victory in the first race of Valencia. With only one points finished from his next four races, his title challenge looked to be in doubt, but a double second place finish in London propelled him back into contention and despite only managing a 22nd and 8th place finish in the final weekend in Berlin, his main title contenders crashed out early in the final race of the season to give the freeze advantage in the title fight with nobody able to finish far enough ahead of him to win the title. Ahead of the 2021 Formula 1 season, he was named as a Mercedes reserve driver, sharing the duties with his Formula E teammate Stoffel van Dorn. There's also been reports that Mercedes are withdrawing from Formula E now that the season has ended, and while there's been no official confirmation of this at the time of recording, it does throw up questions about his future, despite Mercedes claiming the team's championship in Formula E this year. One rumour that's been talked about a lot recently is the potential seat of Williams in Formula 1, especially with George Russell in pole position to take a seat at the Mercedes Works team should they decide to part company with Valtteri Bottas. He would be in a battle with Bottas, Van Dorn and potentially even Nico Hülkenberg for the seat, with Williams reserve driver Jack Aiken also within the shout for the seat, with potentially both seats being available at the team. He could decide to stay in Formula E and defend his title, but for which team is something that is not known until Mercedes officially announced their plans for 2022. He might even decide to make a full-time switch to the World Endurance Championship with maybe one of the new hybrid teams joining the team next season. Where do you think the freeze future lies and what series do you think he's impressed the most so far? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're there, why not hit that subscribe button and also the notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos here on the Apex Motorsport. And also drop this video a like if you like the style of content that we produce. But anyway, that is going to bring this video to a close and I hope you join me in the next one. Goodbye.